Hello and uh, welcome to this lecture on uh, single cycle CPU. So uh, let's get started. So this lecture is the first lecture in the series of lectures that will uh, discuss the notion of processor, what exactly uh, is a processor and uh, what does it mean when we say it's a single cycle processor. So at the top level, when we say a processor is single cycle, it means all the operations performed by processor takes one cycle. Okay. And uh, the cycle or the clock cycle will be defined based on the longest instruction. So you can have hundreds of instructions based on uh, the time it takes to execute an instruction. The longest instruction will define the clock cycle time. There are two additional things that we will discuss uh, in the context of single cycle processor. One is the data path and another is the control. So data path deals with uh, where exactly your data is stored and uh, all the units that operate on data and control unit tells data path what to do at uh, what uh, point of time. And uh, in all this discussion, you should not forget uh, the stored program concept, which is the von Neumann model. Okay, so uh, top level definition about clock cycle, you must have uh, studied about it in the digital logic course. So it has various names like tick, clock, tick and uh, others uh, with the uh, prefix and suffix uh, having clock or cycle or tick. So basically, it's a unit of time uh, that provides discrete time intervals to your processor. And this is based on a clock rate, which is uh, typically uh, your uh, frequency, the, the, the frequency at which uh, the processor is operating on. So a simple uh, example to uh, give you a context, uh, one gigahertz processor will have a clock cycle of one nanosecond, which is uh, nothing but a reciprocal of your frequency. So higher the processor, your clock cycle will be uh, shorter. So that means uh, you can do more and more things in uh, less amount of time. Okay. So with the, this discussion, let's move on to the processor 101. So we, we talked about two things, data path and control. So we'll start with the data path. So data path deals with all the units inside a processor that stores data or that operates on data. So these are the two keywords. Okay. So we'll start looking into each and every uh, unit inside a processor that either stores data or operates on data. Okay. So the first will be instruction memory because we are dealing with the von Neumann uh, model. Uh, our instructions are stored in memory. So we need an instruction memory in which if you provide an address, right? it will give you the instruction and you know this address right this address is nothing but the content of the program counter so you provide uh, the address specified by the program counter and in return you get a 32-bit instruction that uh, the processor will uh, later decode and execute then uh, so at this moment, you should not concern about how exactly these programs are already loaded into this memory your OS course uh, uh, may be the right place to discuss about it. But for, for next few lectures, we'll assume the program is already in the memory. It's already loaded into the memory. Okay. Next uh, data path element will be the program counter. Uh, pretty simple uh, data path where you take a PC and you get an updated PC. Right. So, uh, so usually like uh, you, let's say you are providing PC, you got a PC plus four. Right. Kind of. Uh, okay, so uh, and also like uh, the PC itself, if I look at uh, uh, the content of the PC that provides the address uh, to which you through which you will get your instruction, right? So th that's the address that I am uh, talking about. Uh, then comes the register, uh, which is in the form of register file. So it's a collection of registers you can assume. And here what I'm showing is there are two registers that you can use for reading. 
that's why it's specified with five bits uh, if you remember your instruction decoding lecture uh, so for dealing with 32 registers we need five bits to identify one of the registers and then one of the registers for writing and then this is not for a particular register but this is for the data that you are writing into the register okay that's why the width is 32 bit okay and uh, once you read the content of the register the output will be 32 bit and 32 bit right because you are reading the data now you are not specifying a register number right and depending on whether you want to write into this register or you are reading from the register there will be uh, a control signal that will come to uh, later but at this moment it, it's good to uh, have a view about the control signal and how it can affect the operations that are uh, allowed on a register file okay next comes the alu which performs all the arithmetic operations so you take the 32 bit data that you have got from the register file at the end of the instruction decoding and register read then there is a control signal that defines what operations to be performed and then finally you get the output of 32 bit let's say right pretty simple finally uh, the data memory which is different from the instruction memory because in data memory you can also write data into it which was not the case in case of instruction memory so again you provide your address of 32 bit and depending on whether you want to read or write that will be a control signal either you write into the memory or you read from the memory right so at this moment you should ask why two different memory uh, why one data memory and one uh, instruction memory and not one memory right you can discuss it on piaja uh, then then uh, we'll get into the details don't forget the stored program uh, concept and uh, the lecture deals with the single cycle CPU. So these are the two uh, key points to remember. So once we have uh, all this data path, then what happens in the very, uh, let's say first clock uh, that, that the processor is uh, operating on. So it will actually operate on, let's say the positive edge of the clock. So these are the positive edge. Okay, and at the time, first we need to get the instruction from the memory, and that will be provided by the address specified by the program counter, right? So at this point, the address bus is storing the content of PC, which is an uh, address, and after a while, the data bus will contain the instruction which was present in the instruction memory, right? So this is the content of address bus for the entire amount of uh, clock cycle where the address bus is storing the program counter. It's communicating the program counter to memory. And in return, it is storing, uh, it is getting the instruction which is present in this particular address. And the address was specified by the PC. So this goes on uh, like uh, a sequence of instructions with PC, PC plus four, PC plus eight in a sequential order on every uh, clock tick okay so th this is the process of instruction fetch we are fetching an instruction from instruction memory into the processor once we have fetched next thing as you have discussed in the instruction decoding lecture we need to find out what exactly is this instruction right so we need to decode the instruction so for example if you have this instruction that you have fetched from the instruction memory then the first thing that the decoder will do is it will try to uh, find out the semantic of this instruction. So in this case, we are uh, dealing with registers. There are two source registers, right? And then at the end of uh, decoding, it will actually get the content of these two registers, right? So those two uh, will be communicated to the ALU because that will be executed. Uh, the operation is R. And once the addition operation is done, which is here, it will, yeah, obviously it will uh, be determined by this uh, functionality field. And once it is done, it will go back to uh, the register again 
and in this case we are transferring data we are transferring 32 bit data now no. okay and which register uh, should store this uh, 32 bit data well that is the uh, rt register okay so that is the right register right and obviously there will be control signal which will uh, define which registers will be uh, getting used at what particular time okay so now now let's try to see the entire picture here so starting will be the instruction fetch and for that you need a pc right which will just keep on uh, giving you the uh, updated program counters at the end of every cycle okay the pc will get incremented here right so this particular region is actually dealing with incrementing pc at the end of each cycle and the content of pc is now feeding into the instruction memory in the form of address right and the instruction memory will provide the instruction in the form of 32 bit instruction that will go to the decode stage so this is the fetch stage at this moment then uh, you get the 32 bit and start decoding in the decode stage you are reading registers uh, communicating the data from the registers into the alu finally we are getting the output from the alu and the output of alu is going to another register let's say this register and uh, this is the data path that, that is connecting the output of alu into one of the registers okay so this is the fetch this part is the decode and this part is the execute right okay so with that i will stop we'll continue our discussion on single cycle cpu in the next video thank you